I've always recommended that if you're doing electrical work, you should have a set of test lamps. And for most people, the name that comes to mind is Fluke, and they're kind of expensive, and it kind of takes out the scope of uh, people doing DIY stuff. But there are cheaper test lamps available. I've looked at this very shady Chinese one, uh, which turned out not to be too bad a while back, and it's super simple. It gives a no-go indication. It does load the circuit down with about uh, 11 milliamps in this case. And it doesn't just show you the presence of voltage. It could be any voltage from 6 to 380 volts, it says. But it shows the polarity as well. And the circuitry in this one is super simple. I shall show you the circuitry, even though I've covered this in a video. This one is more sophisticated. Uh, it shows the voltage and the polarity, but it has it uh, in steps. So it's got 6, 12, 24, 50, 120, 230 and 400 volts. So it's more useful. Uh, let me just bring up the hop here and we'll stuff it into it and we'll see what sort of current it draws. So here is the hoppy. So I shall just stick these connections randomly into uh, here. So it's showing 230 volts. The current it's drawing is 147 milliamps initially. That's quite high. Uh, dropping down, did it really do that? I'm just going to test that again. One moment, please. I'm going to let this cool down because they usually have a little temperature sensitive resistor in them. One moment, please. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm stuffing it in now. It takes a wee while for that to respond. 134 milliamps, but then it drops rapidly down to about 20 milliamps. It's currently 18 milliamps. Uh, maybe if held on longer it would go lower, but it does suggest there is a temperature sensitive device in here and although it's not designed for continuous operation, these things, uh, it does look like uh, it has that self-adjustment, but it is currently dissipating about 4 watts in this plastic case, which is quite high, but that's interesting. Right, tell you what, I'm going to open this one. I'll get the hoppy out of the way. Actually, no, I won't get the hoppy out of the way. I'll stuff this one in. Watch the current at the top. Uh, 11 milliamps. And after a while, when it's been sitting at 11 milliamps for a while, which is about 2.7 watts apparently, 2.8 watts, after a while, it will suddenly start regulating down uh, once its little temperature sensitive resistor is heated up and it will just limit the dissipation in the unit. So it's still showing about 2. Point, no, it's cutting down now, 2.6 watts, 2.5, 10 milliamps, and it's going down 9, 8, oh, it's really flying down now. And it will finally settle out around about, uh, well, it's actually gone way off the scale here. It's gone so low it's not picking it up anymore. Okay, right. We will take a look at the circuitry in this one. It's super simple. We'll tell you what, let's uh, just pop the lid off it. This one, not what this video is about. That's the circuitry. It's got two LEDs, a resistor, and then it's got the temperature sensitive resistor here. That is it. What is in this one, though? It's warm. Or is that just me holding it with excitement? No, it is warm. I'm kind of expecting a resistive divider of some sort. Oh, price-wise, uh, this one comes in at a staggering three pounds or something. And that's from a reputable supplier. Okay. Oh, there's the resistors. Oh, there's the little uh, current-limiting thermal resistors. Oh, and there's another one. Well, that's kind of interesting. Let's get this out. There is a screw here. There is a little rudimentary strain relief. Let's pop this out. There's no screw at this end. I shall prise it out. Oh, that is kind of wedged over that pillar, I think. Oh, there it goes. We've got some surface mount components in the back. Uh, notably the LEDs. There's what looks like some sort of rudimentary resistive divider. A uh, couple of diodes. Well, four diodes. Not sure what they are. Right, tell you what. Tell you what. I'm going to reverse engineer this, but I'm, I think I'm going to have to actually remove some of the components off this side. Or am I? Yes, I think I am be able to actually uh, see where a lot of these tracks are going at the back of this. Radio, I shall explore. One moment, please. 
reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. That was quite complex to reverse engineer. I did have to remove all the resistors off it to actually make it easy to follow out. So this circuit board has seven of these high power resistors. It's got four 5.1K resistors, which it turns out are all in series for part of the circuitry. And then it's got three separate uh, 3.9K resistors because the circuitry divides into four distinct sections. Things worthy of note. There is the six volt pair of LEDs that uh, indicate polarity and they're on the AC side of the circuit because it does have a bridge rectifier based on these two diodes and these two diodes connected to each probe. And the reason they've got them mounted separately is uh, just because of the uh, fact that the supply, the probe is at one end and the uh, flying probe is at the other. I didn't see a fuse. Um, I, I'll mention that later when I show you the schematic, but these bridge rectifiers diodes. Um, so you've got the inverse parallel LEDs, they've got their own resistor, and then there's a PTC thermistor. It's just like these little dinky uh, symbol testers. Then they've got another set of circuitry with uh, a couple of Zener diodes, uh, one for the 12 volt LED, one for the 24 volt LED. I guess they're just going for precision there. And then the other ones, uh, 50 volt, 120, 230 and 400 volt are just part of a resistive divider, which is in series that big cluster of resistors. That's it described. Let's bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down it just a little tiny bit more. So let's start off with the very simple one. It's got a 3K PTC thermistor in series a 20K resistor and then two red LEDs in inverse parallel. And uh, if you put it across DC, enough current will flow even at low voltage to make one of these LEDs glow. If you put it across AC, it will actually make them alternate backwards and forwards really quickly. So they'll both look lit and that indicates the AC no, no specific polarity. The 20K resistor will initially limit the current to a fairly low level, but this 3K uh, positive temperature coefficient thermistor will rapidly heat up and it will then actually uh, reduce the current flowing through the circuit further. That's why it started off about 11 milliamps and then it trailed off very quickly uh, to uh, just what, about 1 or 2 milliamps. So now we've seen how that bit works. Uh, it's repeated another one. This uh, potential PTC, should I say, Positive temperature coefficient thermistor increases in uh, resistance as it gets hotter. And in this case, it's used almost like an electronic fuse. It's self-heating, so it does increase in resistance. It had a rough value of 3,000 ohms. The other ones did not. Let me flip this over and show you the schematic of this. So here are the two probes. And we've got a repeat of that circuitry here. So that's the first section of circuitry is the AC circuitry, which has a 1K PTC thermistor, a much, much beefier 3.9 thousand ohm resistor and uh, the two LEDs. The, I've marked it flying probe and case probe because the case probe, as you probe it, the, it will indicate the polarity. So, for instance, if this is connected positive, the current will th flow through this LED and then the resistors. Then there's a bridge rectifier based on those discrete diodes. That's where I would not categorize this for industrial use because I don't think there's a I don't think there's a fuse in the probe as such. There's no obvious sign of that. So you've got the two probes here with this bridge rectifier, and the only thing it's likely to blow as a fuse is uh, the tracks. There are some thin tracks. I suppose they would work as a fuse, but it's not really what you want in industrial environment. As such, I'd only rate this for uh, home use after the distribution board. I'll just put in that dot because it's missing. Next section, the 12 volt section, has its own 1000 ohm positive temperature coefficient thermistor, another of those 3.9K resistors, and uh, then a 12 volt uh, an indicator LED and then a Zener diode to actually match that. So this will be round about, say, a 10 volt Zener or something like that. Likewise, that'll be about a 20 volt Zener, just to give it, because uh, you have to allow for the 2 volt drop cross LED as well. The 24 volt section has the same again. The PTC thermistor, the uh, resistor, and then the LEDs. When you're testing low voltage, like a car battery um, or a truck battery, uh, these won't be dissipating a lot of power and the LEDs won't be super bright. It'll just be basically a 5K in series with an LED, which will be okay. It, the LEDs are fairly efficient, so they'll light up visibly. 
Um, when it's used across higher voltages, the uh, PTC thermistors will kick in. So they'll initially start quite bright, those LEDs, and then they'll tame down rapidly as those heat up. The fourth section of the circuitry is the bit that measures four, uh, 50 volt, 120 volt, 230 volt, and 400 volt. It's got those four 5.1 thousand ohm resistors rated about uh, 2 watts each, I'd say. And then a divider. Um, at low voltage, the because of the uh, amount of current flowing through that, it will create effectively a voltage across the resistor. And initially at low voltage, the only LED that can light is the 50 volt LED because uh, the these resistors are so low that the voltage across them will be um, lower than the threshold of the LED. As the voltage increases to say 230 volts, the uh, voltage across these rises and then effectively the 230 volt one can light and at the full voltage or above, um, it's high enough to actually make all these LEDs light. They're being used basically as two volt threshold uh, LED indicators. Um, Initially, if you were to connect this to 400 volts, so let's just ignore the LEDs because they would add up to a, a grand total of 8 volts, uh, so not really significant. Um, so that would be 4 times 5,100 ohms equals 20,400 ohms. Uh, 400 volts divided by 20,400 ohms would equal approximately 19 milliamps flowing through these. So a decent amount of current, but multiply that by the 400 volts and the dissipation of these resistors here would be about almost 8 watts. But that's what they're rated. I mean, you wouldn't leave it on all the time because the case would get very hot. It probably is only rated for a short duty cycle. But they are, you know, it's a fairly generous rating of resistor. It looks fairly decent. And the way they're spaced from the circuit board, it was all right. It was all kept sort of separate. Um, so it's very simple when it comes down to the crunch. That simple AC section, the two more precise uh, 12 and 24 volt sections, the simple resistive divider for the 50, 120, 230, 400 volts, and that is it. Other things worthy of note. The cable, where have I put the cable? There's the cable. It has fairly thick insulation, it's fairly flexible, it's got a thin core going through it because there's not much current involved. It doesn't have the two colour insulation, which is a shame. That's quite useful for where you want to actually see if the cable's been damaged. Uh, I just don't think this is fused. It says Category 3. That kind of suggests industrial-ish use. 1000 volt max, which will be determined largely by the diodes. Um, yeah, at a push... I'd use it in industrial equipment, but not, I certainly wouldn't definitely opt Cat4, well, it doesn't say Cat4, which is substation grade stuff, because uh, as I say, this bridge wrecked far, if the diodes fail, the only thing that really is there to blow is these tracks. They're not very thick tracks, but you can get that effect of flashing over. Having said that, the two ends of the circuitry are quite well separated in the case. I'm not really sure what would happen there. Don't fancy trying it, not an industrial supply. But other than that, it's simple, it's functional and extraordinarily cheap. That came from CPC in the UK, uh, who are part of Element 14 Group. They're, they usually supply stuff that is meeting reasonable standards. So I would actually rate that as acceptable for general maintenance use on appliances and stuff like that. It's not a bad little tester.